that's outlining is a pointy pain. Um, the uh, shading is more like a, a sunburn kind of pain, uh, like a, a more a low level kind of achiness. Kerry Rosen is 45 painful minutes into a four hour session with her tattoo artist. Her left leg is being turned into a Japanese mural with camellias. One day there'll be turtles. It's meant to represent a garden in winter. There'll be many more afternoons like this as she transforms her limbs into the four seasons. I find it's made me more comfortable in my body. If, if, even if I'm not feeling so beautiful on the inside, I've got something very beautiful to look at. This isn't for other people, this is for me. I work in a law firm and five days a week I'm in a suit. There's nothing unusual about a lawyer getting inked in this studio. They say they get all sorts. Clients include barristers and surgeons. Over the last 20 years, Nicole Lowe has noticed a big change in the kinds of people having tattoos. When I first started, it would have been mostly bikers or bad sort of people, not bad people, bad boys or rebellious people, people, rockers, um, that kind of, you know. And they'd be getting little tattoos here and there. They wouldn't be, they didn't really get massive pieces like people get now. Getting inked is very now. There's pop star Cheryl Cole with her rosy derriere, while One Direction's Harry Styles has got more than 40. But Justin Bieber has only got 17. And this is the ankle of the Prime Minister's wife, Samantha Cameron. Hers, a rather demure dolphin. This is skin cut from dead criminals and murder victims on display at St Bart's Pathology Museum. For years, the study of tattoos focused on prisoners and sailors, but that's now changing as historians recognise that tattoos have always crossed the class divide. I think you could argue that the, they've been in and out of popularity for years, actually centuries, and it's not necessarily a new phenomena. And actually the, the popularity has been different classes, and that at the late kind of 19th century, early, early 20th century, um, that the aristocracy um, were in favour of tattoos, and actually it's mainly because it was very expensive, and they're the only ones that could afford to do it. And once the price came down, then they became less interested in it, and it was seen to become more common. Tattoos have long been favoured by high society. King Harold was inked, as was King Edward VII, and rumour has it Churchill's mother had one on her wrist. I started by having my heart tattooed. Professor Sordon Smith's tattoos are anatomical, based on drawings from the 1850s. The fact they aren't accurate appeals to him. We're told that the doctors always know what's going on and they tell you what's going on with your own body. And this is actually kind of a way of empowering myself about saying, this is my body and I'm in control of it. You know